AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Alright, guys, Keith Gibson's our RMAC champion from last year, and it's yeah. been bugging me ever since that I got out of that place and you got out of that place, yeah. and I never got to sit down with you so that you could take these guys through your rig. Yeah, this is uh, it's a pretty special rig. It obviously is. It looks uh, it looks similar to what I saw you shooting last year. Very similar, actually. Yeah, it's this, so <laughs> this year I'm shooting the same rig, because um, why change? Right? I was very pleased with the way it shot. Um, I did do some upgrades to it, so... Um, Utah Air and uh, Akitak came out with this beautiful backbone rail which stiffens up the entire rifle so it goes all the way back to here. This is one big piece. Yeah, one big piece. Dang. So, you know, most rails are going to end right around here mm -hmm. and if you really, really chipmunk cheek it like I do, you can add a little bit of flex uh, to a rifle but once you put the backbone on, there's no way. I was going to ask you, like, what advantage do you feel like it gives you that stiffening? Like, what yeah. does that do for you? It just lets me uh, just have confidence. I mean, this whole thing is about co being confident in your rigs. So. Yeah, being relaxed. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why I changed to it. Um, and I like the idea also that uh, I do a lot of night hunting. So I can put my clip on up here. Mm -hmm. So having that extended pick rail for that is really nice. I run, I run an AGM uh, oh, that's clip on Rattler. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that does really, really well. And it picks up the thermal awesome too, because the pellets get a little bit of a temperature change as they go down the barrel. Oh, so you cool. can actually really? see them in They flight. actually heat up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. And of course, Element Nexus on top, just because I like the clarity and uh, it's repeatable. You know, I never I never wonder if I'm getting back to my zero or, uh, or if, if what, you know, like my biggest fear, everybody's biggest fear on the line is you dial up for your first sighter mm -hmm. and hit the scoring ring by accident. Oh, you know? God, yeah. So, um, with this on there, I know that's not going to happen. Um, and this, it's it's right out of the Utah Custom Shop, but it's still just an MK2. Um, the, the laser engraving looks really awesome, um, but there's not a whole ton of secret sauce in this rifle. It's more dress up than you know internal changes. Uh, all right, what barrel are you shooting? Uh, this is an old STX liner, actually, um, 700. Uh huh. Um, I believe it's uh, one in 37 twist. Okay. So nice and slow, uh -huh. so I'm not spinning out in the wind. All right. Um, and what 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 loads are you shooting, and how fast? Uh, I'm shooting 44 grain FX pelts or JSB pelts. Yeah, okay. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we're shooting them at 872 this year. Mm -hmm. Last year I shot them at 880 average, but. Uh, for some reason, the gun just wanted to settle in there, so I left it there this year. Interesting. It, yeah, it's shooting a ragged hole, so I was like, okay. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Proof's in the pudding, but <laughs> yeah. what you did to the course last year. Uh, the one other thing that's really important, actually, and I didn't realize how important this was going to be. Yeah. I have a Ronin up here, mm -hmm. and I shot all summer long last year prepping for RMAC with a Sumo, and it, the gun shot really nice. Um, but then I was like, ah, let me just try, see if barrel harmonics are going to be happier with a heavier suppressor mm -hmm. and it went from shooting groups like that to like that i mean we were taking evenings when it was nice and calm and uh going in the backyard where we had 100 yards and until i got entire magazines to go into the i think it was like the nine ring um i, I wasn't satisfied so the mess would your message to these guys be to don't be afraid to experiment with the moderator. Yeah. Different sizes, different shapes. Absolutely. I mean, and it, and it doesn't have to be a Donnie FL. I prefer those, but it doesn't have to be that. It's about the weight at the end of the barrel and uh, how how your gun likes it on that, too. Um, and then you can't do anything without support on the bench Yeah, rest. I see you so, got Saber, some Saber and yeah. Epitac all over this thing. Yeah, so <laughs> the Saber extended rail um, with the... Uh, but the Arca Swiss is really nice because I can change, you know, where it is. Mm -hmm. But I'm almost always out at the end for added stability. Mm. I really like the wide footprint of this, and uh, I like to kick the legs forward a little bit because I'm a short guy. I yeah. mean, I know you're a short guy. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy to sit at these benches made for n normal no. human beings. I'm pretty sure I need like a pool floating to yeah. sit on or something so, to be able to reach. Yeah. <laughs> so I I need to kick those legs out forward, um, and then on the back, um, this thing is crazy. Um, I shoot vertically, mm -hmm. so for me, 
to be able to just twist this up to the next target. Bam! And it, you know, as soon as I see that pellet land, I'm cocking and twisting mm -hmm. that, and I, it's a very, very fast system once you get used so to it. So you find it doesn't really muck with the harmonics? Not at all. Right. If anything, I think it helps because I've got a nice wide piece in contact with the concrete because this is their bench rest model. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I said, I chipmunk cheat this thing hard. Hard. So I, I'm pressing that the back of that rifle down. I've always wanted to ask a pro shooter, especially one that's won our Mac before, um, a couple of things. Um, the hold and approach you just talked about, I want to yeah. hit that if we could. But also like your bipod placement, yeah. does that come in to, does that come into the equation with tuning, like where you run that up and down the, uh, the rail here? You know, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I, I like having it out farther forward mm -hmm. um, with the with the regular rail that comes on it you know that little pick I always feel like I'm easily pivoting so I want to take that out by going as far forward as I can uh -huh. within reason you know mm -hmm. I don't want to like this monstrosity of uh, of a rail on there but I do want to get forward so that I have a longer it's like you have point le of like leverage between. on it almost yeah. yeah so when you snuggle up to the gun, are you loading it up really hard with like shoulder and cheek no, and downward so pressure? Like what do you just doing? just with my cheek? So this this comes in contact with my shoulder, mm -hmm. but my actual firing hand is very relaxed. And mm. so you're not putting any vertical weight on the grip. No, any lateral squeeze or anything like not, that. Not really. Interesting. I have a very loose grip because mm -hmm. like a lot of people will say like you don't want to grip the gun, you know. So mm -hmm. they have a, a thumb rest here or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a old school pistol shooter. I used to compete with pistols. Mm. So I'm used to, you know, my thumb being wrapped around the other side. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that I feel comfortable shooting. So mm. I intentionally try not to impart any wrist movement. And, and so if you take the strength out of it, out of your hand mm -hmm. and just work, you know, all I do is a fire, thumb comes back to here so I can pivot, go mm -hmm. back, fire again. Very, very relaxed there. All the pressure is with here. your cheek so you're not i see a lot of guys on the line they'll they'll be, you'll see them pulling the gun into their shoulder pocket putting yeah. like a lot of pressure sort of rearward to stabilize it so you're not doing any of that no because it actually point in case or case in point um norm and i shoot very very differently norm was, norm's a big strong guy yeah he pulls it in he's we like can't a football yeah. he's thick <laughs> we can't shoot each other's rifles they're mm. not like the zero will be off uh -huh. and it's because i'm a relaxed shooter and he's a strong arm shooter and what that tells me is that if I was to put that strength back mm -hmm. and then change it in any way throughout the cycle, your point of impact, my point change. of impact is yeah. going to change. So, like you watch, you know, bench press competitions in the firearms world, a lot of those guys aren't even touching the gun. Mm -hmm. You know, they just touch the trigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's like kind of an informal take on that. It's like yeah, it's all part little to the gun except for what I really need to make sure my cheek weld is correct. What I'm taking from that for these guys, especially with how you peppered Norm into there, yeah. is the most important thing is to be consistent. Yeah. Like your point of impact will change if you change if you change yeah. your approach. Absolutely. Where you're loading it up, how heavy, how yeah. hard, how tight. And the other thing mm -hmm. is like Let's be real. I mean, we're competing for twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If you think that you're not going to be a little stronger from adrenaline, yeah, right. While you're shooting, uh -huh. uh, you're <laughs> that mommy strength yourself. lifting yeah, the car so off of the kid. <laughs> I, I, by imparting as little as I can on the rifle, I know that the rifle's doing the same thing all uh, the time. All right. Do you want to talk a little bit about? Because they're always asking me um, the interface between the actual barrel liner and shroud. Are you doing yeah. anything in there? Yes. I, okay. You don't yeah. have to talk about it if you don't want to. Yeah. No, I can't. No, oh. it's it's no secret. I mean, so okay. FX came out with those carbon fiber liners mm -hmm. for the sleeve, um, and I put that in, and it did improve my groups. Then uh, I said, well, what if there was no way that the the liner could move inside that carbon fiber? Uh, okay. So I took Gorilla Epoxy and I epoxied it to it. Wow. And it shoots amazing. So it's not. There's no way it can rotate in there. It can't that rotate. Liner can't it can't slide forward, back can't slide. Back. It's huh. locked. As a matter of fact, so this is kind of funny. Yeah. I decided to do this a uh, week and a half before RMAC last year. And so after it cured, I went to put it in and realized that I had incorrectly positioned the carbon fiber on it. So it was too what? far back, so I couldn't seat the liner. Oh, on. no. So I took it over to my bandsaw. And did you glue it in like that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so so then I oh, took no. it over to my bandsaw and very carefully cut the carbon fiber liner off of the... Uh, the actual line oh my god with an exacto knife got the little bit of glue off because you can't muck up that barrel you've learned that barrel yeah. you've got the speed yeah. right the pellet yeah. right the head size all that stuff so that was Harmonics. a little bit of a dummy moment but um 
it shot so good, I was like, ah, it clearly didn't hurt it. So, no. Yeah. Amazing. Do you want to talk a little bit about um, about your tune? Yeah, so um, last year I was shooting at 880 feet per second with a 44 gram pellet. Um, it shot really, really well. The, the the 872 I'm shooting this year is just, I don't know if it's you know, barometric pressure or humidity or what, mm -hmm. why it likes that more this year, um, but it does. And I get extreme spreads out of this, like five and less. Wow. So it, it's really, really consistent. Um, part of that is because I think the plenum is so big and I'm asking so little of it with my reg. Mm -hmm. but I only have my reg at 100, uh, 100 bar. Low. So yeah. everything's really relaxed in there. Everything's really relaxed. When you shoot this 30 cal, it feels like a 22. That's crazy. Yeah. It's probably, is there, is, is that part of the overall, your over, would you say that piece is part of your overall success, getting the gun itself to calm down? Yeah. And no, I absolutely. ask that because I feel like people overpower their guns yeah. like crazy. The more violence you put into a system, A, the more things are going to go wrong and wear out faster, but B, now you have dynamic recoil instead of just a little Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to recover between shots. I shoot fast when it comes to Ventress. Like, people are always like, is he speed shooting? Oh. Yeah, I am, because I'm trying to beat the wind. Okay. You know, like, so are you waiting for, like, wind where it's the same speed or where it drops? Down I don't or? care how fast it is as long as it's consistent. Okay. And then I find my hold, shoot a few ciders. If I get two, three to go where I want, yeah, let's go, baby. You just go. And, and I just run the line. Oh, and and Sometimes that works out really good. Sometimes you get burned. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd be afraid that I would make a mistake, like in my approach or how I'm addressing the trigger. Yeah. And then burn a shot. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, you know, I've just fired so many shots for this. I don't, I don't like accidentally discharge it or anything. Mm -hmm. But um, what I'm saying is like, when you're concentrating on shooting so fast, sometimes it's hard to remember that. Okay, I just saw that one land over here, so I need oh, to adjust a little bit. I got you. Um, so you really have to talk yourself into yeah, shoot fast, let go. But if you see anything change, you better stop. Can we circle back to the 880 feet per second that yeah. you mentioned? So you're shooting out here in just like insane winds yeah. some days, just depending on the, the luck or bad luck of the draw. Like if just moving to like 890 or 870, does that make a difference in, in the pellet stability in your performance? Or do you yes. have to go kind of further from 880 to see it no. not be as good? No, I, I see it at 890 right away. Really? Um, yeah, so at like 890, 900, I've even fired this gun at 910 and it loved it as long as it was calm. But when you start introducing those side winds and the tail winds and stuff, there's something about the Diablo pellet design mm -hmm. that it just doesn't want to be pushed that fast if it's going to have turbulence or wind. So I go you know, a little slower, which does mean that I'm going to have more drift mm -hmm. because the wind has more time to work on it before it gets to the target, mm -hmm. but it's more predictable. Would you say that if you're back home at New York then, mm -hmm. not in this like crazy wind, do you think you could like you could get away with more power and more pushing up the gun a little bit harder? You could maybe. Um, the wind is actually worse in New York. So Is it? Yeah. So okay. Sometimes it's the strong, but it's always more variable. Uh huh. So like I can trust the wind at home for about two, three shots maximum. Um, so by the time I get two ciders on, maybe I have one that I can fire with mm -hmm. confidence, mm -hmm. and then it'll just drop or just kick up or mm -hmm. something. Here, it's more like, depending on how fast you're going to shoot, you can get five, eight, ten, anything past that, I think you're pushing it. But um, So, yeah, I mean, if you were living in a state where it's always calm, mm -hmm. yes, but that velocity bleeds off so fast when it leaves the it barrel. It does. Pellets slow down so quickly. Yeah, you noticed. really don't gain much, you know, mm. trying to push the envelope. And again, like, you know, I have 23 shots in a magazine. It's a nugget there. Can you say that again? What what I say? <laughs> you, can't, you don't gain much by trying to push the envelope. No. That don't. is just, that is so gold. When you said that, I, I think I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't. I mean, even with slugs, man, I'm shooting a, a pretty moderate slug. Um, like, I'm shooting 41 grain sand slugs at 940 feet per second. Mm -hmm. They shoot great at 980 and 1,000 too, but I get more shots in the mag. Mm -hmm. And with this tune, I get, I get three full magazines before I need air. And the gun being settled down, you were saying, yeah. you feel like helps you be more precise. Absolutely. Because everything's so much more relaxed. Yeah. And like, you know, you'll see guns that are overpowered with massive barrel whip and stuff when mm. they're shooting. And this gun just doesn't do that because it's, it's it's like a, it's, it's a nice push of air instead of a slap, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's the key to getting it to shoot so consistently. Do you feel like there's any truth, like you hear these theories going around, you know, you have the pellet right when it leaves the gun? 
and if you have an excess of air behind it when it leaves, oh, yeah. it almost wants to disrupt. Okay, do you want to speak to that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I 100% believe that. I, I just call it turbulence. Okay. Um, if you have, you know, fast moving air behind it, sometimes I think it actually kind of overtakes the pellet a little bit and tries to destabilize it. So what I look for in any tune really is that I am getting just the right amount of air to get the projectile to go at a reasonable speed without wasting a lot out the end. And that comes back to the gun being quiet, settled down, no turbulence, more shots per fill. Uh, just there's a million reasons mm -hmm. to not. Over Good reasons, your gun. Yeah. yeah. Important. On the moderator, are you? Um, you know, they always talk about plus sizing. Yeah. You know, you go bigger than the actual caliber. You, have you experimented with that? What have you learned there? Uh, uh, I know you have more than one gun. But, yeah, I've so got you can speak a to that. Yeah. Um, I I usually do end up plus sizing, but it's not really so much because I believe something. Okay. It's more like. I have a bunch of guns, and the moderators, some of them, like, I, I scribble on them, like, this is for a 35, or mm. this is for a 25, um, but I like to just look at it and go, that's big enough, and then, you know, screw it up. Okay. <laughs> Not, you know, this is my bench rest gun, mm -hmm. so I'm, like, anal about everything. Um, when it comes to squirrel guns, where I'm shooting squirrels 50 yards and under, uh -huh. I mean, it's going to one hole at 50 yards no matter how you tune the gun with a pellet, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm less picky with other guns. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Can we do some myth busting on pellets? Sure. Like you, you always hear guys, um, you know, some of them really focus on uh, the pellet weight uh -huh. and the, wanting that to be consistent. You'll see other people focus on the head size, you yeah. know, know, that's more important. Or you'll see them focusing on, you know, we all know JSB makes pellets for, you know, Daystate and FX yeah. And, yeah. and then the JSB brand itself and Predator and all these different companies, you know, like what what can you teach us when it comes to pellets? So what would you? I mean, I just I believe guys? that you know if you're shooting a JSB or an FX, I mean, like you said, it's it's, it's basically all JSB. Yeah. And um, there's I don't believe in head spacing at all because mm. the, these liners you're you're pretty much head sizing the thing as you push it into the line. Okay. Um, Makes sense. And then the, as far as weight, though, massive difference. Really? Yeah, I think that. If you sort your pellets, which I mean, we Nicole and I were up last night doing it for like five hours. Oh my gosh! And uh, it's the least fun thing we do, but it's absolutely worth five to seven. Nicole's points. right behind the camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely worth five to seven points on your target. Really? One hundred percent. Because when you shoot straight out of the tin, you get these unexpected flyers. Yes. And that happens even if you look at the skirts, and you're like, "Well, I know that I didn't have any dents in skirts, so why did I have that flyer?" It's weight. It's always weight in your experience that yeah. causes that. Yeah, wow. because if I sort, like this is a half MOA gun, mm -hmm. um, and if I don't sort, it's an MOA and a half. So when you guys are sorting, so I, I sorted like one time, uh -huh. and it was and it was like you know in the in during the pandemic when the product we were getting isn't like what would be customary, right. you know, at a JSB, and um, and it was for the Maverick review. Yeah. Because I was having what you were saying. I'd, I'd, I'd get great performance out of the gun and then boom! And I'm like, whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Why? What was that? Yeah. yeah. And so I started sorting and, you know, I had all these piles, but then what I didn't have the knowledge to know is I had like a bandwidth. Like yeah. I had this size in the middle and then as you go out, you kind of get fewer and fewer. Like yeah. how do you know which one of the sizes to go with? Well, I so I use them all. But they all have to be in their own magazine. So, like, what I'm saying by that yeah, is, like, I don't that? mind at all if I have a tin of pellets that's 45 grains, and then I have one that's 48.7. Okay. But they're going to be separate, because what I care about, you know, when it comes to hunting, it's a different story. Okay. And then I want, you know, one consistent thing. All right. But when it comes to bench rest and you have a cider, you fire your cider, and as long as the ammunition and the rest of that magazine is the same, mm -hmm. it should follow suit to what your cider just did. Whereas so, if you okay. mix weights, they're going to be all over the place. So the most important thing is not necessarily what weight it is. Right. It's just that they're the same. Correct. And then you make the adjustment with that mag because you know they're all the same. Yes. Wow, that is very interesting. So you're not afraid to go up there with different weights. No. As long as they're in, you know, you have them recognized in your mags. Yeah. You take the side of you're like, oh, this mag's hitting here. Yeah. And then it'll be consistent for you across. Absolutely. That's a golden nugget right I there, do, guys. I, I do <laughs> throw out the outliers. Like if we have... Yeah, you know, it's supposed to be a 44.8. Mm -hmm. Like, I had a couple pellets show up last night at 47 grains, and I was like, no, toss it. 
because now you're starting to be like, okay, that pellet is so heavy mm -hmm. that we're changing harmonics. It's not just about the speed of it uh -huh. anymore, you know. But if, like I said, we were except I'll accept anything from 44.7 all the way up to 45.6, as long as I, bro I have it broken down in two tenths of a grain segments so that I can shoot each magazine as its own thing. Interesting. Yeah. And then when you go go hunt, you just make sure you have the same thing because all the time because you don't have the opportunity to right. run. Right. No ciders. A there. cider. He yeah. gets there's one shot, one yeah. opportunity. Yeah. But most of the time now, you know, we, we hunt with slugs. Um, I hunt squirrels with pellets, but those those shots are so close yeah that it doesn't matter that much um but the the slugs that we choose the brands we go with um we do that because we don't have to sort uh, like can you speak to that the yeah. brands that you've had success with you know let's yeah. have it be a learning moment for these guys yeah so the the newest one that i'm using is actually my favorite so far um zan slugs they are insane um what makes them what so do you feel makes them insane it's, it's absolutely pure lead so when you hit something the, the sound of it hitting the animal <laughs> is way louder Splack. than the gun. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. And that translates to like, <laughs> holy crap, we're actually getting some kinetic energy uh -huh. out of the air gun, right? Okay. Um, and it, it results in, you know, like, I don't personally have a problem with shooting a pigeon in the chest, it flies 10 yards and dies. Yes. But because everything's on camera and you get the keyboard warriors, you gotta be really careful. it's better if sure. they just die mm -hmm. right then. And then. Yeah. So, and, and a slug like Zam slugs or varmint knockers, um, with those soft lead slugs, we'll do it every time. Interesting. Because they just hit so much harder than, like, for instance, uh, a really accurate slug that I liked a lot is Nielsen's. Mm. They do not kill with the same power as Zan's and Varmint. Because it's a harder metal. Because it's a harder alloy. Mm. Yeah. So you've met, you've mentioned Nielsen Specialty Ammo, Zan. Yeah. Are there any ones that you feel like, if like let's say they own an impact like you do, yeah. that they should try? Yeah, so if, if you own a 22, I highly suggest you try out um, the South Africans' javelins. Those are very explosive as well and very accurate. Um, the If you're shooting 25 and 30, um, the, the Zans and Varmint Knockers, uh, for me, those are my favorite. Um, I actually, like, I, I shot Varmint Knockers for a long time, and I didn't switch because uh, I didn't like the slugs. I actually switched because I felt bad mm. asking them to make them for mm -hmm. me all the time. Because um, it's just one guy, you sure, know. Yeah. He's awesome, and his slugs are great. But I didn't want to just overstress him. Yeah, he needs um, to eat too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I gotcha. Yeah, and and then when I found Zan, and he was like, I said, I shoot for a half an hour every morning. He goes, That's a lot of shooting. I said, It is. Can you do it? He's like, No problem. No like, problem. Right, cool. He says no problem to everything. Yeah. <laughs> that is, you talk about a yes mentality. Yeah. That that is John. But when when we went uh, out to test them. I was actually having a lot of trouble finding a slug for my 25 mm. caliber, and I didn't know why. I mean, it was a great gun, everything, the speeds were really consistent, but it just didn't want to eat anything. And then I threw in two different weights of Zans. The first two I tried were like, I'm one hole in here. Wow. And I, so I don't know what kind of voodoo he's doing. That yeah, he won't so tell different. me. I interviewed him yesterday, and yeah. he was like, no. Yeah. And he's like, you are never coming to my factory either. I don't, he, yeah, he's, I'm he's, like, he's, Zan, this something. is different. I don't know what you're doing, but give me as many as you can <laughs> <laughs> that's all that really matters yeah because right? <laughs> i mean they're perfect yeah and the the, the packaging is a lot like fx hybrids mm -hmm. you know so you don't get dinged up slugs uh, which is important when it's pure lead mm -hmm. you could ruin them so easy totally so uh yeah it's packaged correctly and uh they just shoot awesome i mean i got if i go on my front porch and prone out i have a target at 237 yards and i i have one little target like this at 195 and if I don't cold bore it in the calm of the morning, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Like, it's just so regular. You know it's that. you. Yeah. Cam, do you need to come in and get something, yeah, buddy? I, I don't want to hold you up. You're good. I just had to run back here. Come on, brother. Appreciate you. Sorry to hold you up like that. Abode. <laughs> well, what are we forgetting to talk about? Like, is there anything that I forgot to ask you about that you would feel like you would want to share with somebody maybe new coming into this? Yeah, um, I mean, for, yeah, if I'm sharing this with somebody new coming into this, forget like 90% of what we just talked about. Just go and shoot your gun. Like, if you get an FX impact and shoot pellets out of it, it's going to shoot like a laser. I guarantee you. If, you're, if you want to shoot slugs and stuff, it's a whole different world. It's a pain in the butt to tune. You're going to need to watch a ton of videos. Uh, but that stuff comes later. You know, like, shoot pellets, enjoy the gun, get to know the gun. And then if you really feel like you need to shoot slugs, go for it. But... You know, there's a slug craze right now, mm -hmm. and people forget that we were killing stuff with pellets for a long time mm -hmm. before slugs. 
I mean, when the when we first got our 30 caliber, we had one day where I think I nailed three pigeons off the same silo in a row, 230 yards with a pellet. And, and to, to your point earlier, what you were talking about, that transference of energy, yeah. we kind of forget that a pellet with that big, broad head, yes. it's just a really good way to transfer that energy and, it is. and yeah. take, your, take your quarry down. Yeah. Quick. And, and, if you're, and if you are thinking hunting is your thing and you're, you're going to start out with pellets, I highly recommend 25 and 30 caliber. Um, there's no such thing as overkill when it comes to the toughest animal in the world, pound for pound, which is a squirrel. <laughs> I, I like <laughs> iguanas. I've, I'm looking. Yeah, are, iguanas are pretty tough. They're, they're not are, animals. They're, they're a freak they're of like, nature, they're man. They're monsters. They're weird. It's weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, we go out uh, with a 30 caliber, or a 25, and you, you can take chest shots and they drop. Mm -hmm. um, but if with a 22, they almost always run. So it's things like that. Like understand what you might want to do with the gun, mm. and then pick a caliber. Maybe one caliber over what you were thinking. Unless you were thinking 30, then 30 is great. Um, 35 is a lot of fun, but those big pellets mm -hmm. drift in the wind like crazy. Ooh, there's another nugget. You've got so much surface area, so the wind really does catch them. Um, I like shooting them. It's cool to be firing a 357, mm -hmm. you know? But mm -hmm. as far as, like, what's going to be the easiest for me to shoot? 25 and 30. And if I could only have one caliber forever, it would be the 25. God, Keith, this has been amazing. I can't thank you enough. Yeah, the only other thing, the, the only other thing before I let you yeah. run, um, we're here at Armac. Yes. So, and you know, you're a guy. You've been around this block. You've had a lot of success here. I only came once. On, I just, uh, I just happened to win on this <laughs> battlefield, which is, you know, that's kind of huge. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people at home watching this. They're going, man, should I go? Because I'm up against oh, yeah. that. No, you, you know, what go. would you say to them? What advice would you give them to prepare and come out here? And yeah, I would say number one. I, it's, I, I, I want to like say two different things at the same time. Come, no matter what. Um, whether you want to just watch, get a feel for it, and then shoot. Like if you live close and you're not sure, just come watch. It's a ton of fun. Um, but I hate it when some of my friends come out here just to watch all the way from the East Coast. I'm like, dude, you should have brought a rifle. Like, who knows? Yeah. You know, like everybody says stuff like, like oh, you know, you're a really good shot. And to me, and I'm like, I had a really good day. Yeah, so there's, so you're saying there's some luck involved. There's some luck involved. And, you know, what bench do you get? What heats are you in? And then if you have that good day, man, like, it drives me a little crazy to see people that shoot in the uh, marksman mm -hmm. get scores close to pro. And I'm like, why didn't you join the pro? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they're like disappointed that they didn't get the grand prize, and it's like, well, you didn't shoot with us. Well, in case they missed it last year, how much did you win? Twenty-one thousand dollars. Say it again. Twenty-one thousand dollars. Oh my god! <laughs> for shooting with for, for like a week worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and then last, if I could, you know, word Armac. Yeah. You know, I, I I would imagine you've got some emotional ties now to the Armac. Yeah. You know, the Armac brand and and what yeah. it means to you. You want to speak? speak to that a little bit and then yeah, we'll, we'll say I, goodbye yeah the uh the feeling out here is amazing i mean i i used to be uh, a master class idpa shooter and i would go to those competitions and it was like cutthroat mm -hmm. you know everybody just wants to get their time on the range they're not going to tell you a thing and out here it's the exact opposite the air gunning world is so different and uh it's it's fun because we get to meet people like this week is the first time i got to meet matt dover that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's always a treat. Yeah, he's such a good guy. Yeah, amazing. But uh, yeah, I mean, last year when we finished up, I didn't know if I had won or not, but I knew that like I shot as good as I possibly <laughs> it was could. Good. Good. You know, well, I was yeah. like, this is gonna be good. I don't know if it's second or first, but I'm definitely yeah, up there. Tight. Mm. And the the field had cleared out, and Nicole and I walked up to the range and just looked at it, and I felt like a baseball player after the championships, looking at the field at dark. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like. I'll remember that moment with the mountains and the scenery and it, my arm around my wife. It's burned in, man. Yeah, I, I'm coming to Utah forever. Like, it's I don't cool. care what else, what else changes in my life, I'll always be at RMAC. And I highly encourage you guys to do it, too. If you're not going to shoot, at least come and watch. But it's a mistake to not register and bring a rifle because you're going to want to when you come. And you might have a great day and end up with 20 Gs in your pocket. That's right. Spoken, uh, spoken from the heart, guys. Keith yeah. Gibson. If you don't know, he's got a, a YouTube channel, 68 Whiskey. Yeah. Certainly check him out there. He has a lot of great learning moments. And um, thanks for being so generous and Anytime. so transparent. It's good to see you. And I appreciate you, Brady. And yeah. have a great week. Thanks, man. Good luck to you. Thank you.